Welcome to my second video in my part 3 Java MTA course. In this video we're going to be talking about reference data types. It's essential that you have a good idea about primitive types before we start or before you watch this video. So if you haven't watched my primitive data type video, I would suggest you go back and watch that before watching this. So as always, I'm going to tell you the key information that you must learn for the MTA exam. And then I'm going to give you some questions to really cement that information. So in our previous video, when we talked about the primitive types, we learned that they're, they're stored in the stack. The reference types variables are actually stored in memory twice, both in the stack and in the heap. And I'm going to be showing you a diagram to better explain that in a moment. It's important to know that both the state stack and heap are located, located in the RAM memory. The heap has almost an unlimited amount of memory, but access is much slower. The stack is very fast, but limited in size. So it's important that you know the difference between it and why they've created both the stack and the heap. Reference types are all the kind of objects or classes that you use, for example, the scanner any kind of array or an array list that you use, and that strings are also reference types. It's important to notice the capital letter <coughs> is uppercase, where the primitive, line, the primitive data types, the capital letter or the first letter will be lowercase. So if you imagine what will happen is, we have here an int number nine, and that is just stored in the stack. So that would be stored only in the stack memory. But when you create a object, for example, you create a reference in the stack. And that reference is linked to the value that is stored in the heap memory. So that means that the heap or the value stored there can be much greater than what you would be able to store in the stack memory. And then, for example, if you ever try and change that memory, what will happen is that reference to the object stays the same so the reference is the same in the stack memory but the pointer that points to the heap memory is different so when you change the value what you will do is you'll actually replicate or you'll create more uh, um, an additional value in the heap memory and then what will happen is you'll get a little garbage collector program that will come around and it will say hey this value here isn't referenced, isn't linked to any value in the stack memory, so I will remove it. And that is how the heap memory works. So you have a value that is stored both in the stack memory, which is the reference, and then you have the actual value stored in the heap memory. And if there is not a link between the two, you'll have a little program in Java called Garbage Collector, and it will go around and collect and dispose of all of the values in the heap memory that aren't linked to any values in the stack memory. So in Java, it's important to understand the role of the garbage collector and how it cleans up the memory in the heap memory. Importantly, what this heap memory allows you to do is you, you can store values that are much bigger and so this means that, for example, a string can contain a lot of methods because we have more memory that we can store things with it. So the behavior of a reference type will be very different to the behavior of a primitive type. And in previous videos or in, in the next kind of couple of videos, we're going to be looking at what kind of behavior that we can do with the string object. And all this is because the string object is not a primitive type, but a reference type. In fact, the behavior that you can now do with a reference type is so extensive that what they did in Java is they allow you to change your primitive data type into a reference data type, and then so giving that primitive data type additional behavior. And they can do that using wrapper classes. So in the previous video, we talked a little bit about what a, pr a primitive data type is and the size that each primitive data type takes in memory. In this video, we're going to talk about how we use that wrapper class. Again, you do the same kind of uh, name. It's still the same. So a byte would be a byte. But if you notice, that B 
is capitalized, which means that it's not a primitive type, it's now a class, and, and you can create objects from it. And you can create objects the same way as you did previously. So online, you may see a lot of uh, tutorials that show creating a wrapper class of an integer like this. However, in more uh, up-to-date versions of Java, this has been moved to this, where you can just declare a integer um, with a value here. And because it's a capital letter, it's not using this as a primitive data type, it's using it as a wrapper class data type of an integer. So you can just assign it to um, the value, or you could use the method value of and give it that value here. But both of them do the same thing. They're creating a reference type of a primitive data type of integer. Now, why would you do that? Why would you um, want to create a reference type of a primitive type? Well, there are many reasons. So, for example, there are some things in Java that you can only use if you give it a, uh, a reference type, like an array list, which is what we're going to be talking about later. So you are not able to add a primitive data type to an array list, where you can add a reference data type to it. Number two, uh, with a reference data type, you can actually have the value to be null, where you can't do that in a primitive data type. And number three, the actually you, with the uh, a wrapper object method, you are able to do a lot more things. So you can compare, you can sort, you can search, and you can convert to other data types. So for example here, I've created that object here, and just like any um, object, if you put the dot, you can start seeing all the methods you can use to work with that object. And so you can do a lot of behavior once you've converted it to a reference data type. So in the next couple of videos, we're actually going to be talking about the string reference type. And we're going to be talking about the key kind of behavior that you must know. Um, however, you don't need to learn all of these behaviors. Um, but it is important to know the difference of why you would want to convert a primitive type into a reference type. So we have covered a lot of information. Again, I'm going to throw some questions at you to see if we can cement that information. So pause the video now and see if you can answer all the questions. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video. Um, let's start off by answering question one. So I'm going to put two counting, one primitive and one reference. So if you start at line seven, uh, the int is a primitive data type, so we put one there. If we go to number eight, eight is a reference data type, and we know that because of the capital S. If we go to number nine, even though it's an integer, which is a primitive data type, we are wrapping that up into its wrapper object, and we can tell that because it's got that I. So that's two, I'll replace that with two there. Uh, same with the boolean, we know that it is the wrapper object um, that's wrapping, wrapping up that false value. So that's number three. Um, line 11 is using a lowercase boolean, um, and we're just having true, so that's a primitive data type. And number 12, even though it's using two references, um, I'm only going to count this as one, so... I'm going to put this as 14 because string is the value that's being stored. Um, although if you put five, that's also acceptable. So primitive should be two and reference type will be either four or five, depending how you want to count it. Number two, what lines of codes contain the wrapper object? Um, so we have line nine. So uh, line 8 is a reference type to a string, but it's not a wrapper object. 9 is a wrapper object of the integer. So remember, integer is a prim uh, primitive type. And so we're wrapping it up into a, a integer object. So line 9 is that integer object. Line time 10 is the same. It's wrapping up that Boolean value into an object. So it could be a reference type. So line 10 allows us to do that. 
And the last one is line 12. So we have that integer uh, wrapper, and that is allowing us to convert um, from that integer into a string so we can assign it to our string value. So line 9, 10, and 12 is the answer to number 2. Number three, which of the following is a reference type? Again, this is just a repeating the question we had in the previous video, but about primitive types. And we figured that out by deciding which one has a capital or which one was capital letter. So in this one, um, we do the same thing and decide which one is not the capital letter. So int is a primitive type, so um, we get rid of it. Double doesn't have a capital, so it's a primitive, so we get rid of it. Boolean doesn't have a capital there, so we get rid of it. And the scanner class or the scanner object, this would be created with a capital S, and so this would be our reference type. Number four, there was a slight error in number four. This should um, talk about line 10. It should be talk about this line here. Um, what data type is the value inserted into text 2 on line 10? Um, so even though we, we declared it as a boolean, we've actually put a string in there. And that's fine. We can actually add strings to our wrapper classes. Um, because we're not worried about the memory being stored in there. It, because we can increase that memory quite large. Um, so this is a string value. And then if we ever wanted to convert it into a proper Boolean value, we could easily use that Boolean method to do that. So on line 10, we've actually inserted a string, which is okay for a wrapper object. Last one, which line of code allows, uh, uh, which line of code uh, allows us to change the integer to a string value? And of course, that's line 12 because we're using that integer string to string method to convert number one into a string. Okay, so we're gonna end the video um, there. Before you go, have a check of your knowledge to see if you can answer all of these questions. Are you able to name three different reference types? So if you can, that's great. Um, can you tell me how you would change the primitive data type int into a reference type? And what is that word that we use when converting it? What do we have to um, package that primitive data type into? And the last one, can you explain why you would change a primitive type into a reference type? So if you can answer all of those questions, that's great. I think you really cemented that knowledge. If you found this video useful, please like. And if you would like to, uh, if you would like notifications of my future videos, or if you want to be updated when I give mock tests for the MTA exam, please subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.